Hello. Right. Next up, we have Jody Carter, who will be taking us through his journey of using Raspberry Pi to set up uh, camera traps to capture snaps of wildlife. So welcome, Jody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's my first time at PyCon and the first time in, in Cardiff, in fact, and I made the mistake of staying at the Travel Lodge on Queen Street last night, where there's a, I don't know if you know it, but there's a nightclub right across the road, which is up until about four or five o'clock in the morning. So I'm a little bit dead on my feet at the moment. So um, I apologize if I forget anything and if I'm tending to rush a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm here to talk about setting up a, a camera trap using a Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to talk about um, the things I used, how I did it, the results, and also um, where I'd like to, to take it the next steps. And hopefully, some of you here today will be able to help me on that because I'm a bit of a novice with Python. Um, been using Raspberry Pis for a little, little while, um, and I'd really appreciate if, it, if um, afterwards you could maybe come up and chat. I'd love to talk to you if you think you might be able to help. But um, all that to come. There is a, a tutorial on this. Uh, there are lots of tutorials, but this one's mine in the last edition of the Magpie magazine. Um, there's links to the slides and also the article on my um, Twitter account as well. So. Just to start off why I did this originally, there was a, a mouse that lived in the, the couch in my living room. Um, nobody believed me, however. You could hear the scurrying about and the gnawing of the little fibers inside. We'd never seen it. We've got two cats. They didn't really seem to bat an eyelid, but I was absolutely convinced we had a mouse. So I thought we need a little bit of evidence. So with the Raspberry Pis and the cameras that I had lying about, I thought I must be able to set up some sort of um, motion detection camera to spot the mouse. Um, the other reason, I'm a primary school teacher, and I thought that I'd be able to link this in with the learning at school, with things like um, living things in the habitats, but also I kind of find that if I tend to learn things, then by also almost by osmosis, I pass it on to the children as much as possible. Um, there, were also, there was also evidence of badgers in my garden. Um, I don't go around looking for evidence of animals about. It's not like I walk into rooms and start sniffing and say bats or rats or whatever. Um, they tend to more present themselves to me. And also the, the image in the background, um, at school, we, and, and I'm not criticizing, I'm not, the, the, this isn't um, being disrespectful or anything to the companies that provide these things. The, the cameras in bird boxes, they then link them up and then they live stream them. So we did one at school, but they're, they're a couple of hundred pounds. Um, not all schools have the budget for things like that. And using um, the Raspberry Pis and the cameras, it's, it's a fraction of the cost if you have the, uh, access to the resources and a little bit of technical know-how. And it, it, it is quite straightforward, I found, to set this up, um, you can really do it yourself. It's great um, access to, for the children. They can uh, provide uh, experiences that they might not ordinarily get, ordinarily get. And also, I was looking for a project to get my teeth into. As I said, I've had Raspberry Pis for a while. I've never really found something with Python that really interests me. So I've kind of dabbled with it, but this, I thought, would be a really good opportunity for me to learn something. So how did I do it? Well, I just Googled Raspberry Pi motion detection, basically. As I said, there's loads of, loads of tutorials, there's loads of resources, loads of help on the community. Um, I'm a novice, so I use lots of reference, um, and I had to hack the code um, a little bit for it to do what I wanted to do. And as I said, I've used the Raspberry Pi and the Pi Zero as it's low cost, um, and it's great for beginners. So this is what I use. This is some of the kit. So um, the containers, that's actually a, an old mayonnaise jar. On the right, it's good because it's sealable. Um, it's watertight. Um, Raspberry Pi, Pi Zero, the thing in the middle, I think it's called a, a Zero View, which is really great for, with a Pi Zero um, for attaching it to things, elastic bands, Bluetack, um, Sugru, um, and various different types of camera. Um, when I was figuring out how to do the motion detection, I came across two libraries. One was called Motion, and then the one was called Pi Timolo. Um, both really easy to install. They both kind of more, did more or less the same thing. Um, when there's something moving in front of the camera, it'll take a picture. It can, you can also set it so it takes a video. And I think um, with both of them, you can also get it to stream as well. So you can actually um, connect up to the internet. So you could, in theory, um, uh, have that um, going all the time on, on the web. Motion, um, I found quite tricky. I, I, I think it's written in C or something like that. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But I couldn't figure out a way to, to change it, to hack it. They've got a really good config file so you can make make changes to things like the file size and what it does, but to actually change the, the functionality of it. PyTimolo was, um, was written in Python, and they downloaded the files, and you got access straight to it, both to look through and to figure out what was going on, but also to actually change it, um, as I did, as you'll see as we go on. And then there it was, the mouse evidence at last. It was a, a fantastic moment uh, to prove that it wasn't a riot, it was in fact a mouse. It's a bit blurry, um, as are most of my ph photographs, both in this and uh, using my camera, but that was the mouse. And there's a better shot, 
I took it in, uh, there's literally hundreds of photos of this one mouse, and I take it to class, and um, they became really captivated about it. We learned a lot about uh, mice, about the difference between mice and rats, um, and the different types of mice that you get. Also found out, which I, I didn't realize, well, it's kind of obvious, is that the mouse was only in the house because it was over winter, and then they go back outside in the summer. It was, that was new to me, but uh, maybe that's just me. Um, so I started thinking what else might be out there. So I, um, I'm quite into nature, I'm quite into animals and go for walks and things like that, and I've got some bird feeders set up. So I set up um, the Pi Zero on the bird feeders, uh, just using elastic bands. Pretty crude, um, but reasonably effective. So I took some photos, again, a little bit blurry, um, but close up. Uh, and again, you, you wouldn't ordinarily get as close to, to the animals as this. We've got a coal tit there, and I think it's a, a, a blue tit on the right, um, on the bird feeders. Um, there's lo I had loads of pictures of these, because they're, they're obviously so common. There's also robins and things like that. Um, here's some more pictures, but also uh, some squirrels. Um, squirrels feature uh, later on in this presentation as well. Um, I decided to make it better, so I started using a, a, a night vision camera, um, setting out the, the camera traps at night at the bottom of my garden. I um, also started using bait like cat food, um, fruit for, for some of the animals. Um, peaches and plums are pretty effective, and also porridge, uh, dry, before you add the milk. Uh, and I had about three cameras set up most evenings, um, and used decent power banks that had lasted about six or seven hours. I was finding that with the, the ones that I had, weren't lasting that long, and also with the Pi Zero, it tends to tend to last a lot longer through the night than with the, with the normal Raspberry Pis. So that moved on to more mice, um, as you can see on the left, uh, and more birds on the right. These are, um, this is using the, the motion library um, that I installed, and it's, it, you can have the option to have the red box, but also I found that if the animal is quite small or far away, the red box actually, you couldn't really see what you were looking at, so there is the option in the config file to remove that. There are also dunnocks and nuthatches. Now, I'm from Scotland, and you don't really get these birds um, up there. I live in the southeast of England now. Um, so these are kind of almost tropical to me. Um, but in school, it was really good because we were able to talk about the distribution of the birds, which led to things like climate, what do they eat, why they're, only, why they're more prevalent in the southeast of England, and things like that. Also learned things like the dunnock is also known as the, um, the hedge sparrow. The distinction between a sparrow is that the dunnock's got red, red legs. Got some sad news about the, the nuthatch, though. Um, unfortunately, um, I, when I went out one morning, uh, it died. It um, was, lying, that was lying dead. I felt really guilty because I felt somehow complicit in its murder. And we'll see in a couple of slides time as to um, what my, uh, the thing that might have actually uh, carried out that heinous act. Not only do we have nuthatches, we have inquisitive nuthatches. So this one, um, obviously, uh, it, I don't suppose it, it, it's looking at the camera, but it was funny because a lot of the, the birds started to see the camera. I don't know if it was perhaps the red light that was on the front. I don't know if maybe they'd gone and had a chat down the calf or the, the Queen Vicar or whatever and all got together with the other birds and said, you know, there's a camera there. You make, make sure you comb your hair. Here's another one. <laughs> but then unfortunately, the Dunnock looked a bit surprised then. I don't think he was in on the meeting and uh, he forgot to, to comb his hair and make sure that he was looking his best. The fox also got in the act. So there's a fox at school that we, that we, uh, that we found. It. Um, the fox kind of appears every now and again, but what I would do along with the mouse, so I'd kind of give them daily, weekly updates on, on the, the animals. And we did this with the fox, but I had to stop because the children got a bit confused and thought it was the new school pet. And at break, when it appeared, they would be taking their snacks out and trying to feed it. Uh, and I, I didn't want children to turn up without missing a thumb or, or ever going home and saying, oh, Mr. Carter said that we've got a new fox at school. It's the class pet. It's, uh, so we had to stop doing that. Um, and then there's the badges at last. This is a... a a brilliant moment, um, I must say. Um, maybe sounds a bit sad, but I'd never seen a badger in real life. I'd never, didn't realize they were in the garden, but this is absolutely brilliant. Um, it's a bit blurry because it's a bit far away, so that's using one of the zero views. So um, probably a bit more powerful uh, infrared light or something like that. One, one good thing, incidentally, about the zero views, um, I think that's what they call it, the cameras, they've got two uh, infrared lights on either side, so you don't need to buy uh, another light. They're, they're, they're really, really good, um, easy to set up. So there's one badger. There's more badgers, and um, there's a bit more close-up, a bit blurry again, uh, but proof that it wasn't just a fluke. Badger's noses, at least I, th I think it's a badger's nose. I'm no expert, but that's what I'm putting it down on, so a nice close-up, and then a nice picture of the badger there, and it looks as if you can look into its eyes, look into the soul of the badger, what's it thinking, and maybe it overheard the, the birds talking down the calf about getting a close-up. 
Then one morning, um, I went out. Um, this has got nothing to do, to do with the Raspberry Pis, but um, I went out to, to pick up the cameras, and I heard a rustling, and I actually saw the, the, the badger coming up. And as soon as it saw me, it scurried away. But yeah, that was, that was a, a really lovely moment. Unfortunately, the only, uh, uh, sorry if it, uh, I'm talking about death, but um, the only time I'd ever seen a badger was roadkill before. Um, so that was, that was a lovely moment. They were just over the back um, of my garden. Um, there are lots of false positives. So with the, the, the motion detection, it doesn't really know what it's looking at. So if there's any movement at all, so the swinging of the, uh, the, the bird feeder, um, something moves in the, in the undergrowth, you can't really see it, or perhaps something, just the leaves blow in the wind or a shadow changes that it seems to take the picture. So I thought I'm going to have to make some, some improvements here, which is going back to why I use the PyTimolo um, library. So I started using the Google Vision API, um, which I think Magpie talked about as well. Um, it, it, it was great. It was really pretty simple to code. I had, did have a few problems when I was installing the library. I, I think I might have kind of done it slightly wrong, but it, I got it to work um, eventually. And I kind of hoped that if it knew that it was looking at a bird, then it would take a picture of the bird and it would reduce the number of, of empty uh, uh, bird feeders, etc. So here's me testing. So there's the cat. There's the, the culprit that I mentioned before. And um, you can see the labels along the top. Um, it kind of, you know, it... it, it it says what it thinks it is. So that's the labels that are returned by the Google Vision API, um, cat, black, vertebrate, mammal, kitten, etc. And then I set up a Twitter account. So I, again, hacked the code and got it to identify whether it was a bird that was in the picture, and then it auto-tweeted that to my really unpopular uh, Twitter account. As you can see, the like and the retweet below, that was my other Twitter account. So. Um, <laughs> And look, the magnificent uh, creature that's no longer God, God bless its soul. Um, yeah, so that's the Twitter account. Um, and I don't know why people didn't come and view it, because doesn't everyone want to come and see a picture of a squirrel? And there's another one there as if it's about ready to pounce. Um, I also set up a, a live YouTube, YouTube stream. So this is kind of more connected to the bird box that I mentioned at the start. Um, really simple to do. Again, just installing a library. You just need the Raspberry Pi, the camera, and a, and a YouTube account. Um, and it kind of does it all for you, really simple. Um, for schools, I think it, it would be a brilliant resource. Um, and for me, it was just a little bit of fun. You, you did get about maybe eight hours or so of filming and then about sort of maybe 10 minutes of um, actual action of birds or squirrels uh, in the picture. So you kind of have to keep your eyes glued to it. Um, and that's just the, 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 um, the link to the, the project that I used uh, to install the, um, to get the YouTube up and running that's on the, the Raspberry Pi website. Um, yeah, so it's just me saying about tweeting the labels again from the API. Um, you can actually go online and test it yourself. So here's the fox again that was at school, the, pet, the school pet. And on the right-hand side, it's got the, um, the labels as to what it thinks it is. So obviously, it's mostly grass. It's mostly wood. There's a little bit of a fox. I like the fact it's got zoo. There's an animal. It must be a zoo. Uh, wildlife, just sort of, um, what, yeah, beach. I'm not sure where that comes from. So it's a bit hit and miss. But in general, if it's really clear as to what it is, like a bird or, or whatever, then it, then it normally comes up um, chumps. Um, so what do I want to do next? Well, I've got it to detect whether or not there's a bird in the picture. I've got it to tweet it. Um, what I would like to do is to... With the, with the Google API, it won't actually discern whether, it, it'll say it's a bird, but it wouldn't necessarily say it's a, a blue tit or a robin or a blackbird or anything. Um, so I've kind of been tampering a little bit with OpenCV and, and TensorFlow. Now, I understand with the Raspberry Pi, this is probably pushing the limits a little bit. And this is kind of where I'm looking for, for some help, basically, some advice as to, to what to do next. Um, what I would really like is to set up some sort of project where it ident identifies it's a bird and then I'm thinking about perhaps drawing uh, images from something like Flickr where people have labeled it as being a robin or a blackbird or a nuthatch and using that information to then uh, train the system, I suppose, to identify and, and basically tell the difference between those different birds. Um, what would really be great is then if schools could then have access to that and use it and you can get things like bird counts, learn all about the different birds, about, how, uh, about what the, the most common birds are. If, uh, I know that the, the, the moment the, the bird populations are really fluctuating and in a lot of the cases they're going down. So to talk about things like that. So a really good educational resource. Um, and obviously as well, I want to go on Spring Watch. Um, finally, and I'm sorry, I've, I think I've 
race through this quite quickly, but um, I got talking to someone about, uh, about um, motion detection. And we got China says, oh, maybe you could try this. I've got this article in Magpie. I've got this Twitter account. Go and see it, please, please go and see it. Uh, and we're talking about it and sort of putting him in the right direction. And I for forgot to ask him um, what he was doing with his. And I said, well, I've got mine set up in the garden on bird feeders. I've found some badgers, there's squirrels. Uh, and he went, oh, that sounds, that sounds really interesting. And I kind of thought, oh, are you not doing the same thing? He says, no, I, I think my house is haunted. <laughs> so he wanted to set it up to try and uh, to get some ghosts. Um, obviously, it's not a ghost. It's just a person with a, a sheet over them. Um, finally, thank you very much. Um, picture of the badger again, uh, my Twitter account. Um, I think I've probably raced through that quite quickly. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I hope it's been um, informative and interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any questions from the floor? Oh, plenty of questions. Let me come around with the microphone. Hi. Hello. Um, thanks for that. Really interesting. Um, I think the obvious question is, have you tried sound? And how would you um, go about doing kind that? Of. I was talking to the chap here. He came up to start and said that he'd um, used this to in found bats. Uh, there was, a, again, all of these things, um, nothing to do with me. It's things I've found online. But there's a, a guy who had um, set one up to try and find bats. And what he'd done was he'd um, set up a microphone to hear the bat calls, the bat sounds. Um, so no, but I, that would be another thing. And, and again, this is totally, this would probably never happen. I don't think I've really got the, um, the nous to, to, to do this. But like with the identifying the birds, uh, the images of the birds, I think it'd be really amazing to, to be able to record the sounds of the birds and then to be able to tell what birds are in your, in your garden. So the answer is, I haven't, but you can, yeah. On YouTube, it's got the sound, if, obviously, if you've got a microphone. Thank you very much for a lovely talk. Okay. Um, birds in my garden are quite suspicious of something new, so I just wondered, after you'd put the camera up quite close to them, how long did it take them to come back to the feeders like they used to um, be? Not that long. Uh, I found that with Dunnocks and Robins, they're fairly inquisitive anyway, and they'll come up even when you're sitting outside, as you, as you probably know. Um, when I was sort of doing research, the reason I've kind of used, I've used things like uh, mayonnaise jars and, and sandwich boxes and things for the containers, I was trying to find um, proper like camera trap boxes, um, but they're, I mean, they're not really expensive, but they're, they're a bit sort of out with the amount of money I wanted to spend on this. Um, and I was reading about uh, some people, it was an American website, so they were using these camera traps I think to stalk animals to, to shoot. Um, and they were talking about how they, uh, when they put them up on a tree, how they disguise the, the camera box. And some of them said that they took a photo of the tree before the camera box was up, printed it out, and then put it over the top of the box. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking, well, I, I can understand, but, the, the, but I don't think animals are as, as a, um, uh, why, you know, it's, it's clever as to identify whether it's a camera or not, but they, they came back pretty quickly to answer your question. It, it wasn't, I think, the, as long as the, the, um, the bird feeder is established, or, the, or the, the, and I know you're not supposed to feed wild animals because they come reliant on it, but I think as long as that's established, they'll come back, they'll come back, whatever. I mean, when I'm sitting out in my garden, the, the birds will, will feed generally happily, even, even when the, I mean, the cats are pretty useless generally, but even when the cats are there, so, so it's, um, it doesn't take long at all, if, if any time at all, as long as it's established. Okay. Do we have another question? Uh, question from a slightly different thanks. Uh, question, uh, thanks for a great talk. Um, you brought up some really interesting points, and I'd be keen to see where you sort of take it from here. Um, slightly different tack. Would you say that bringing, the tech, bringing what you've done into the classroom in increased engagement with the outside world a lot more? Because to and young people are becoming a lot more reliant on technology and forgetting about what's around them outside and just about the screen in front of them. Um, <laughs> I suppose this provides, if anything, this provides a nice link between technology and the outside world. Um, I, I suppose at school we try and teach children that they're, they're users, not consumers of technology. So it's not just having an iPad or a screen in front of them just to, because they're bored or for something to do or as an, or as a, a, an alternative to, to using a jotter, it's, uh, it's not some sort of adjunct that's been slotted on. I think that it should be used um, to make learning better. So I, I hope not. I know that um, from this and, and from taking the photos into class, uh, and also I, I run um, some computing clubs at school where we've, we haven't set these up, but we've kind of talked about and looked at them. 
um, that it has engaged them and it's excited them. And I, I think with, with children especially, um, I'm not sure how much, I mean, probably shoot me down with this, but uh, I'm not sure how much they see technology as being something that's different. I think it's all, it's, it's, everything's completely, almost combined together in a way. Um, but it depends on how it's used, I think. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any more questions from the floor? Hi. Um, I was wondering, are the cameras at all affected by the weather, the time of the year? Are they always covered or...? Um, they... Yeah, kind of. On the, 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 um, what I, what I made the mistake of using the, the, the nighttime cameras during the day. So the, the one of the squirrel, if I can quickly, but it's a bit purple, um, and that one as well. So they're a bit purple because they're actually nighttime cameras used during the day. So if you don't make that, oops, don't make that same mistake as me. But um, in terms of cloud cover and things like that, not, not especially. I think you still get, get a good photo. I mean, I have seen some uh, people using, using similar things to this, where the, 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 the pictures are, are crystal clear. They're, they're, they're incredible, actually. Um, mine are a bit amateurish, but I don't think so. Um, but obviously, if it's, if it's going to be dark, then without some sort of lighting or, or flash or whatever, but then that, would, that wouldn't work with the, with the, the animals that scare them off. So it, it, I haven't really noticed it particularly, but, but it, it, it probably would. Sorry, <laughs> so answer your question. <laughs> Any more questions? Yep. I'll come around, hang on. Thank you. Sorry for making you run. Um, so you mentioned uh, using power banks to power using what? Sorry, oh, power, bank, yeah. power banks. Um, uh, I was wondering if you'd um, kind of experimented at all with like low power modes or kind of sleep modes with the Raspberry Pi. I'm, I'm guessing it's a bit difficult with the application. If you need to be running all the time and things, but have you tried that at all? And I, I haven't. I know that there's, and I, I can't remember what it's called, but there is a um, there's a battery I think that you can get for the Raspberry Pi, and it, and it has. Uh, sort of the, the, the functionality that it switches off just as the power is running down rather than it, it crashing things like that. So no, I just use a, a standard mobile phone uh, USB power bank um, and when it runs out, to, it, it just switches off. Um, but with the Pi Zero, it does tend to log, last seven, eight hours with a decent power bank compared to the, the Raspberry Pi. Um, but I suspect as well that it would be down to, I, th I think as well you can switch for like power saving, you can switch off like the, the, the lights on the, on the, the Pi's. But it would depend, I suppose, on whether you're taking video, whether it's if it's streaming or, or tweeting. But generally, the last about seven eight hours. So enough to put it out at ten o'clock and then come back at six in the morning before I go to work to, to take them back in. Any more questions? Nope. Nope. Okay, great. Thank you very much for that great talk. Thank you very much.